You are watching Tech Confessions, created by Amy Lewis and brought to you by VMware. Thank you for joining us here, Vaughn. <laughs> we are uh, here today to ask you about your software-defined moment. You, yes, the one and only Vaughn Stewart. When did, you, when did you get interested in the software aspect of what we do as opposed to just hardware? So I think the, the, that's a great question. Thank you for having me. It's, it's always a privilege. Uh, it's VMworld 2017. Great show as always, phenomenal. Uh, coming back to the question. So I think there's two aspects, right? There's, there's where's the journey, right? Where, where have you been? And it was really clear early on, circa, 2002, with GSX running on Linux servers, back when I used to work for a different employer, but a, still a prevalent vendor in NetApp, uh, where we were able to, to um, significantly expand uh, the demo capabilities within field labs, leveraging very early versions of VMware technology. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so my, my, my hands-on experience days, you know, go, go way back. But you, you saw what was, what was available um, through the abstraction layer with software. Now, that's the early days, which is very different than um, where we're at today, just because the technology is advanced uh, and evolved. Um, where today, for example, we're working with um, a global service provider who's made the decision that um, because such a large portion of their business is powered by VMware, um, there's no point in having separate uh, compute and storage operational teams. They're going to oh, wow. converge them all into a single operational team. And right, so their design goal is how do I meet all these SLAs and requirements for the customer base, which is their revenue? How do I bring new services online? And by, by, by the way, how do I change the infrastructure so that they, the virtualization admins are now going to run not just the compute stack, but also storage? And so, you know, we at Pure Storage bringing this notion of, and not to be a pitch, but of self-driving storage, meaning there's nothing to, to tune um, or no trade-offs in your design. Basically, put the array in place in a couple minutes, it's up and running, and you're, you've got the aspects of performance, cost efficiency, right, high availability, and now just define the services in software. Do you want it as a tier two performance level for chargeback? Great, it's in software. Want to move that customer to tier one? Just change the policy, boom, they move to, to a higher tier, right? What's their, what's their local recovery, remote recovery, retention policies, right? Just define it in software, and this again goes right in line with that, the compute layer where we can give them more memory, more CPU, right? Adjust the, uh, the infrastructure based on what the customers are willing to pay, right? What's the, the policies they want to use, and so, again, much more agility. So one thing I wanted to pick up, a thread uh, from what you said, you were talking about how they were converging a couple of departments, so uh, I'm really interested in that. Have you seen that as a common, a common occurrence as people move in, progress on their software-defined journey. I know we always talk about business transformation, but are you saying they are actually architecting, which started first, the you know chicken or the egg here? Did they, did they architect to consolidate the team or based on the architecture and the business value they wanted to drive, they changed their actual personnel? Yeah, it, it, so great question, right? And I think if, if you've been a participant in the virtualization space for uh, you know, a half dozen years or so, you'll recall this notion early on around IT generalists. And this was really something that spawned out of VMware's technology, saying that we're going to simplify the operations within IT, you'll no longer have specialists. Now, you know, I've always kind of challenged that the networking skill set is um, significantly, an, uh, so significantly different from compute and storage that, that I think that would be the laggard in terms of the operational team that would be able to converge. But we are clearly seeing today, and probably about a third of the organizations, uh, a C-level led initiative, or a, a director of IT uh, you know, led initiative to converge the compute and storage teams, particularly around the virtualized landscape. And think about it, if, if in the mid-sized enterprise space, if 50 to 90% of the floor tile is powered through vSphere, why wouldn't you converge those two operational teams? Why do you have two silos, one that's agile and software defined, and one that's more rigid and complex you know, in stoic. So, um, you know, this is this. I think this writing's been on the wall for a while. It's taken a time for either through next generation uh, storage arrays or through models like hyperconvergence to actually make it a reality. Hmm. So, 
what are you hearing out there from customers or give us your projection of where are we going next? I mean, this is a lot of transformation. Um, what's next as we progress down this path? I don't think it's death to silicon. We've heard so much about like, you've got a program or you'll die. Are you saying you've got a storage and networking, it's time to tear down that wall and get along or cross train? What are, you, what are your thoughts? I know you run, you cycle, is this, is this just that? You're athletic, so learn how to do both. So I, so I appreciate the question. Um, I don't think it's about what, um, I don't think the question is about something that's going to directly relate to virtualization in terms of what's next, right? So in the past we've had you know, automate and DevOps and you know, make a more you know, uh, agile you know, type of workplace and now we're talking about converging operational stacks. I think if you look at the macro trends, there's clear indicators that your enterprise and legacy applications, the ones that reside within the virtual framework today, are being simplified, the management's being simplified, automated, scripted, and so the amount of manpower per virtual machine or CPU socket or manpower per petabyte, however you want to measure it, is, is on a downward trajectory. Conversely, what I think you're seeing is a need for the IT skill set to get closer to the product lines or lines of business. As you're seeing new technologies come in play as we go through this digital transformation, and I apologize for playing buzzword bingo. <laughs> um, ding, 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 we need yeah, a doc yeah. to come down. But, you know, but as our products are more, our customers' products are more connected and will continue to be more connected, there's an increasing need around a skill set, not just for the new tools, but new networking paradigms, security, data paradigms that are going to support you know, if we start looking at GPU-based processing, the software that, that, that powers these systems, the data scientists and the teams that, that are then using that infrastructure, right? We're, traditionally, if you're in the virtualization space, you're used to a traditional developer that kind of tr supporting that traditional line of business. And what I'm saying is it'll be no different as we go forward. The tool sets that we use and the technologies will advance. Will VMware lead, lead in that area? They absolutely will. Will there be opportunities for a number of other vendors to introduce themselves? Yeah. And so it'll just be interesting to see where we're going. But I would suggest to you, um, don't worry about trying to figure out how to enhance your, your skill set today based on the current portfolio. Go look up and see, you know, go talk to your lines of business. Where are you investing for technology? And align your skill sets to what the departments are going to need in the very near term. I love it. Yeah. Thank you, Vaughn. Thank you. And when you're ready to make your tech confession, please join us on techconfessionsthashow.com.